Morbius is back in cinemas. Well, it was. Morbius is a movie that follows the story of Michael Morbius who becomes a living vampire after a medical treatment goes wrong. Morbius has been considered by fans and critics alike as one of the best movies of the year and of all time. It has everything a viewer could want. It has action, suspense, Michael Keaton and a bit of romance. Jared Leto was the perfect choice as Morbius the living vampire because of his hair. Sony didn't need to buy a wig because of that. That saved a couple hundred in the budget right there. Morbius was praised as the highest class of cinema as it received 200% on Rotten Tomatoes and an overwhelming display of love and support from the people who saw it in the cinema. It is the first movie to make one trillion dollars at the box office and such unprecedented success will never be seen again. Sony understands the love that the fans have for the movie, so they decided to show how much they appreciate it by shortly re-releasing it in the cinemas. This was undoubtedly so they could make more money off it, I mean so they could show the fans they care. This film is an example of the highest class of cinema, it far excels work produced by the finest directors or actors. But one thing is surprising, nobody saw the re-release of the film Morbius in cinemas. I can only assume that it is because everybody saw Morbius way too many times and its beauty was far too much for the human mind to comprehend. It's like being bestowed with divine knowledge from an angel and it burns your mind. The release was a great way to finish Monthbius, even though Monthbius was forever cancelled by its creator. Luckily for you, I saw the release of Morbius, but it wasn't just a re-release. There was so much more content that puts everything back into perspective and recontextualizes the events of the first film. Morbius goes on to do great things, terrible but great things. After the events of Morbius, even after Morbius meets with the vulture, Morbius learns how to jump between realities. Then in a glorious transition, Morbius jumps into the worlds of different films and solves every loophole imaginable. It's amazing that Sony managed to film all of this. He goes into the Terminator War all and fixes everything after the first two movies. He jumps into the Batman universe because he is half bat and half man. No, he did not become man bat. That would be a stupid concept for a movie and Sony is above that. Next he jumps into a universe where he becomes a vampire hunter, where he possesses the best attributes of man and vampire. He also had a cool pair of sunglasses and a sword, but I think that they just put the Blade movie on as an intermission and time filler. Finally, towards the end of the movie Morbius realizes that every time he jumps into a different reality he leaves a clone of himself. Except, he doesn't realize that each clone is a version of himself and that it is a Morbius from a different reality. However, for some reason each Morbius becomes hostile against each other. This leads into the third arc of the film which is known as the Morbiverse of Morbness. At the end of this arc, the Morbius clones fight each other in what is the most epic fight in cinema history. The Morbius we have followed throughout the length of the film fends off many clones of himself with fights more each more intense than the last, but it seems that other Morbius clones have learned new powers of their own. Unfortunately the Morbius that we followed throughout the film gets bested by the final Morbius who learned dark magic by falling to the dark side. Our Morbius got banished to this dark place that's dank and covered in monstrous vines. The vines overtake Morbius, but his vampire powers don't work in this world. Instead, his powers change when he becomes overtaken by this darkness. He can see the people of the regular world and realizes that he is in an upside down reflection of the regular world. He sees that he is beneath a small town and has been transported back to the 80s. His vampiric hunger for life grows however and soon he sees himself wanting to kill and feast on the essence of those who lives above. But with nobody to feast on all blue blood, to maintain his sanity he loses touch of who he really is. The darkness consumes, and now he only wants to break into the real world and consume everybody until he is satiated. He is Vecna, 